it doesn't matter who made it or how long it's existed, every single software project over the course of its life is gonna have some bugs. And pretending like a project is bad because some bugs have been discovered might be one of the dumbest arguments I frequently see in the FOSS world. What really matters is the response to those bugs, how quickly they are addressed, and all of that sort of stuff. System D is a prime example of this, and it's probably just because it's System D, and there are a lot of people out there who just don't like System D. But it's especially important when it's not actually a bug, it's actually an issue with the documentation and a miscommunication on what the tool is supposed to do. By now, you've probably heard about systemd temp files unexpectedly deleting users' home directories. This sounds really, really bad. Why is a tool that has temp files in its name ever touching something like your home directory? The home directory is not a temp file. This is something that should always be on your system. This seems like a bug. This seems like the tool doing something it never should be doing. But that is not actually the case. The tool is working completely as intended. Firstly, let's talk about what systemd temp files is, or at least what it claimed to be on the man page. Systemd temp files creates, deletes, and cleans up volatile and temporary files and directories using the configuration file format and location specified in tempfiles.d. So right here, it specifically mentions volatile and temporary files and directories. Any normal person reading this is going to think, okay, it operates on temp files. It has temp files in the name. It deals with temp files. This is true in the past, but today is a flat-out lie, and this is outdated documentation. This is a prime example of why old documentation is sometimes worse than none. Now, to be fair, it would be one thing if users and distros were using the tool in a way that wasn't intended. If this was a tool that was only supposed to be used for temp files, and then users or distros were like, okay, well, I'm gonna manage things that aren't in that category. That wouldn't be something you'd blame the tool for. Like, you couldn't blame the CMake developers if you wrote a script that deleted your home directory. You're the one that went and did that. But in this case, working with things that aren't temporary files is directly endorsed by the upstream project. Here is a file related to your Etsy directory. Here is one related to your var directory. And here is one related to your home directory. Now, I know the existence of System D just triggers some people, but I don't care that it does this. If this is something you want to have in a System D suite, that is totally fine. But the name is an issue, and this has been brought up in the past. Temp files naming is inconvenient. This should not be reading from a directory called tempfiles.d. This tool should not be called systemd temp files because it does not deal with temp files anymore. It deals with so much else. That wasn't the only thing being discussed here, and some parts of the discussion did end up being merged, but the whole calling it temp files thing, that thing still happened. The main reason that part got shot down is basically it would be a lot of work, not in the project itself necessarily, but in everything else, because if you change the name from temp files, then every single script that references temp files now needs to be changed. All of those distros that had files in temp files now need to make sure they're moved into a new location. And yes, it could be done. And yes, it probably should have been done. But at the time, it just didn't seem like a good idea. With all that backstory out of the way, let's move into the bug report that started this whole discussion. Refuse systemd temp files dash dash purge invocation without config files specified on command line made by Jeden Astka. I'm gonna guess is how you say that. And the distro here is relatively important. Debian. The unstable part doesn't really matter, but they are a Debian user. Now, this user noticed that their var slash temp directory grew quite a bit and they wanted to manually clean it. Since I was about to log off for the day, I skimmed through the manual for systemd temp files because 
you're on a system D system, there's a thing called temp files. Logically, it makes sense that that would be the thing that manages your temp files. What he didn't know is on Debian, systemd temp files is used to manage your home directory. Now this isn't the case on every single distro. I believe it is the default behavior of systemd temp files, but some distros choose to do otherwise. Not knowing much about the systemd temp files architecture other than being used to clean up temp files, dash dash purge seemed like a good idea. If this option is passed, all files and directories created by a tempfiles.d entry will be deleted. And this option was just added in 256, the version just before the version this was fixed in. So he ran the command sudo systemd-tempfiles-purge, expecting it to clean up my temp files, as would be a reasonable assumption. Now you could argue, well, maybe you should have read more of the documentation and tried out the dry run option first. And yes, that would have resolved the issue. But the way this documentation was written, I would assume the same thing here. But he noticed some warning messages and paths appearing in his home directory. So before everything became horribly bad, he hit control C and it didn't delete everything, luckily. It started in his config directory and started making its way out from that. So most of the important data was saved, but a lot of things did get completely deleted. As anyone would be, he was kind of confused. So he went and asked in the Debian Next channel, and it seems that this is not a bug, but a feature. As systemd temp files also handles auto creating data directories such as home and the purge flag is meant to wipe them clean. I am unsure what's the utility of that but I assume there is a good reason. Again, this is something called temp files so it seems weird that something like that would even exist. As a fix for this to make sure it doesn't happen again in the future, he suggested updating the documentation. 1. An explanation of why a given option does something. For example, this right here. As a user, I don't know what those are actually intended to be used for, but as the developers, you probably do and can describe them better than I did, which is totally fair. Second, a huge warning next to purge. This option is dangerous, so it should be made clear that it's dangerous. I think a big part of the reason why people just didn't care about what the actual cause was here is the response to this being made. This might be the worst possible way you could frame this. This is from Bluka, a Microsoft employee who works on the project. So an option that is literally documented as saying, all files and directories created by tempfiles.d entry will be deleted that you knew nothing about sounded like a good idea. Did you even go and look at what tempfiles.d entries you had beforehand? Maybe just don't run random commands that you know nothing about while ignoring what the documentation tells you. Just a thought, eh? He is completely right here. But... <laughs> When you have people who kind of are already annoyed about a problem with your project, this is not the way you try to comfort them about the problem. With that being said though, he did still go ahead and do something about it. Firstly changing it from a bug to a documentation issue, and then went ahead and merged a documentation change. Man, add a bit of a warning to systemd temp files dash dash purge. This change to the documentation would make things a little bit clearer, making it very clear that the safe way to run the application is first do a dry run, know exactly what is going to be deleted, and then go ahead and delete things. However, there might be an even better way to improve it. Here we have another frequent developer, this one from Red Hat. This PR obviously doesn't make things worse, but I don't think we should have a command that works like this at all. Maybe if it was guarded by, this deletes user data and this is what I want, but maybe not even then. And this led to the issue being marked as completed, but the original reporter wasn't completely happy with this result because the thing called systemd temp files that says it works on temp files is still operating on things that are not temp files. Yes, there is a warning in there to say, well, check what it's actually going to delete, but why is the thing that says it does temp files not doing temp files? 
This led to a comment from Lennart Pottering, who in this case is being the voice of reason. I think we should fail purge if no config file is specified on the command line. I see no world where an invocation without one would make sense, and it would have caught the problem here. So what it was previously doing is if you ran the command, it would go over every single one of the files, deleting whatever happens to be there. What Leonard is suggesting is by default, you should have to specify exactly what you want to operate on. And with that, Lennart reopened the issue and gave it a new name. Now, as time went on, this started getting quite a bit more attention, and we got a comment like this one. So to understand what Q and then the rest of this line does, you actually need to go and read this part of the man page and understand what all of this text does here. Now, I'm sure you can go and do so, but it's a little bit more complex than just going and reading the one little section on Purge. And here we have that Red Hat dev from before who just doesn't think Purge should exist in its current form, especially because there is support for tab completion. So if you don't read what you tab out, if you type P and then, oops, I've got Purge there, and then you just don't read the command and you press enter, you've just accidentally deleted your system. Yes, you should read the command, you should double check what you are writing there. But, a pitfall like that probably shouldn't be in the application. And following this, they made a merge request. Temp files, disable purge, which does exactly what you'd expect, disable the purge functionality. And considering it was only just added one version ago, it's not really that big of a change. Now initially, this was all just looking good. It was looking ready to merge, and it looked like it was actually going to happen. And then Bluka came in and had a different opinion, and for some reason was getting very hung up over people talking about this on social media. Yes, people are going to complain about an issue in System D where it's deleting their home directories, and you want them complaining on social media because that means they are not complaining in your GitHub repo. The purge command was already in use in Debian and Ubuntu packages, and none of this is ever intended to be ran manually anyway. There's no documentation that I'm aware of that even hints of doing that. It's for time services and packaging scriptlets, but if you read what it says in the systemd temp files documentation, that isn't really implied from what I can see. Changing documentation is of course also fine to do if you like. It is true that tempfiles.d has long since not only been about temporary files and for years has taken care of Etsy for example and the docs could use some freshening up. As such, one merge request which did make it into the final version is the one that shows the new version of the documentation. Systemd temp files creates deletes and cleans up files and directories using the configuration file format and location specified in tempfiles.d. Historically, it was designed to manage volatile and temporary files as the name suggests, but it provides generic file management functionality and can be used to manage any kind of file. It must be invoked with one or more commands, create, remove, and clean to select the respective subset of operations. This is much, much better. Now, I would also like the name to change and the location to change, but having this explanation here that the name is sort of just this historical thing that, yeah, it's not accurate anymore, I think is a good stopgap. Along with this, some further changes from Lenart make Purge more restrictive and various other tweaks. This attacks the problem on three fronts. We refuse to run purge without specification of at least one tempfiles.d drop-in name. Two, we document in the man page much clearer what this does with emphasis and warning. Now under purge it says, if this option is passed, all files and directories created by a tempfiles.d entry will be deleted. Keep in mind that by default, home is created by systemd temp files. Therefore, it is recommended to first run systemd temp files dash dash dry run dash dash purge to be certain which files and directories will be deleted. Both of these very clearly bolded. And thirdly, we document in the help text better what this actually does and how it differs from dash dash remove because 
not everybody is going to the full man page for their documentation. If you have the option to use help, your help documentation also needs to be good. I'm pretty sure with these changes, it's quite hard to still break your system with this, i.e. any chance to learn about Purge should already make clear to you that this is not what you want, and even if you ignore that, you have to go out of your way to specify the wrong tempfiles.d snippet on the command line. There is absolutely going to be ways that people break this, but if you break it at this point, I think it's kind of your fault. This is a case where the application was working absolutely as intended, but the intention wasn't clear to the user. It was not well documented, it wasn't explained, and the tool temp files doesn't operate on temp files. I do think they really should look into actually changing the name to something that really applies to what it does now, but I think this state that it's in is much better than it was before, and hopefully going forward, nobody accidentally deletes their home directory. But what do you think? Do you think the person who initially deleted their home directory just screwed up and should never run the command? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, subscribe, subscribe, pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Delete your home directory in other ways.